Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to another edition of the Lord's Prayer. I'm ever so grateful that there's another morning that I can come before you to share what the Lord has placed on my heart, to hear what the Lord has to say, to come before him in prayer. Just excited to be up this morning just grateful to hear the birds chirping come on in the room just want to wish everyone a good morning and i am thankful and excited for this saturday morning i'm in a different location so i'm just kind of taking in the peace even though i have birds that chirp by me but it's just different when you're not home um and i'm just so glad that God is ever so faithful to us no matter what even though we don't we're not always faithful to him right um I'm just so thankful this morning just sitting in a, a posture of peace and a posture of gratitude so this morning whoever watches the replay whoever watches or who's tuning in live good morning good afternoon good night um the lord was talking to me about the comeback kid right and for me i think about um what's the young man's name mr miyagi what's the what's the movie the karate kid i think about the karate kid and i think about just how sometimes you know growing up in a society that just looks down upon people for whatever reason, right? Bullying, whatever it is, cyberbullying, all the things that take place nowadays and how when we were growing up, people would pick on you and then it's kind of like you grow up, you go to your reunions and people then get to see like, oh, you, you made it or like, you didn't become the person they thought you were going to become, right? Like how the the roles switch. Like if you were a jock and people thought like you were always going to be stupid, let's be honest, then you come in and you're like over a Fortune 500 company, you know, people just look at you different. You You look like you came back from from something that you wasn't supposed to come back from or people that were nerds or even people that were, you know, emo. So those, you know, the the dark Gothic people or, you know, just having a perspective about people. You just don't know what's really inside everyone that needs to come forth. And, um, this morning, it's not really about that, but it's about, coming back to Christ, right? There are many of us who, and I almost feel like this is a clarion call, that's what I'm hearing. There are many of us who during this pandemic may have fallen off in our study, may have fallen off in our prayer time, may have fallen off um, in building our relationship with God. And I heard the Lord say this week, I'm still here. I'm still here for anyone that needs me, that wants to return to me. I'm still here with open arms to receive you. I'm still here and I will forgive you. I'm still here. And I still love you. I'm still here. And I'm trying not to tear up because I know that I was raised in a Christian home and I went to church and all of these wonderful, fantastic things. And, you know, you you sing your Sunday school song, you go to Sunday school, you learn the word and things of that nature. But then as I got older and as I grew, um... Not necessarily that I departed from it, but I wasn't living that lifestyle 
intentionally. I was not intentionally praying, intentionally seeking after God. I could be honest and say I probably just put him to the side and just never really, never really paid attention to him, ignored him, right? Um, and when I decided to give my life back to Christ, I was kind of in a place where I've tried all that I can do. I did all that I can do and things around me kept blowing up. And I was just like, if you can't make it better, who can? Right? Like that, that was my thing. If you can't make it better, who can? And I came back and gave my life to Christ and it's been amazing ever since but the Lord is literally putting out a clarion call this morning saying I love you I love you and I forgive you and I want you to come back to me and he's waiting with open arms for whomever it is that is in need of him whoever it is he's waiting there's a bible story called the prodigal son and it's in luke chapter 15 verse 11 and the story talks about two sons and a father and the father has all of this land and all of these things for his sons to inherit and One of the sons, I think it's the youngest one, asks for his inheritance early. So he's like, give it to me up front. There's actually a movie on Pure Flix about this. But the son is like, give it to me up front. I want my portion. The younger son wants his portion now. I don't want to wait until you die to get what what is coming to me. So the father gives him his portion. He runs off into into the world. And does whatever he wants to do and blows through the money. Now, the other son stays behind and does what he's supposed to do, right? He helps the father. He takes care of the home, takes care of the land, takes care of all of that. And the prodigal son at one point in time, once he blows through all, all, of, his, all of his inheritance, he has no place to go. And the father's like, just come back, right? Just come back. So the son returns and the father receives him with open arms. The father receives him with love. The father receives him, period, right? No matter what he did, no matter how selfish he was, no matter how greedy he was, The father received his son because it was his son. There's an unconditional love that he has for his sons, both of them, right? So the son, the oldest son was like, no, he shouldn't get to come back and just be loved and be received and let's give him a party and kill off all the animals and feed him and make him full and fat. Like that's... We should not be doing that. And um, the father was like, you know, the father was just so appreciative that his son is alive, his son is well, and he returned home. Like that was his focus, not on what he did, but the fact that he returned home, right? Like relationship can continue, you know, um, that the love can continue for his son and he knows that he's safe, he's well. And he will be taken care of now that he's back. Um, And our father just began to say, it's the same, I, I will receive you the same way. For all of those of us that have stepped away, stepped away from our faith, stepped away from prayer, Stepped away from reading the word of God. Stepped out of circles that included people that fed our faith. 
step back into the world. I don't want to use the word black backslidden. But those that are, those of us that have stepped back into the world. Those of us that have done things that are wrong in the sight of God and thinks that he would never forgive us. Those that feel it's best to hide things from God. The many variations of the things that we run from. God is wanting you. He's calling you. He's loving you. And he forgives you. And he wants to embrace you today with open arms. He wants to receive you with an open heart. He wants you to bear everything before him. My God, he wants to have you be in his perfect peace. And if this is you today, the Lord knows all things. There's nothing that we can hide. There's nothing that we can run from that he doesn't already know. Our father knows all of our stuff. He knows all of the things that hurt us, all of the things that make us run from him, all of the things that turn our hearts off to him all of the things but he wants to show you him for yourself not what the church shows you not what people show you but let the Holy Spirit teach you this morning let the Holy Spirit show you the way because he was called In the word, he was called our instructor. He's called our guide, is what the exact word is. He's called our guide, and he wants to allow you to learn who the Holy Spirit is, who God is, what his love means. Find your identity in Christ so that you can know the power and the impact of God and his love, of God and his presence, of God and his forgiving power. Those that have never come to know Christ and have been running, I just see somebody running, running and looking back in Running and looking back in fear. Running and looking back in worry and in concern. I see someone running and it is dark. And you've run out of options. Today is the day that God is knocking. That he's calling. That he wants you to come to him. And if this is you today, I just want you to say, whether you're backslidden, whether you've gone back into the world and serving your flesh as opposed to building up your spirit man, or whether you never come to know Christ, the Lord wants you to renounce your sins, ask for forgiveness, seek for forgiveness, And allow him to have his way. So let's go before the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your daughter or your son, Lord God. Your daughter or your son that does not know you or have relationship with you. The ones that have experience of you 
through your people, through the church, but don't know you. We lift them up before you this morning. Father, and we pray that those souls are saved. We pray that your hand rests upon them today. God, we pray that their life is not their own. Oh God, we pray that you would turn and shift them from a place of worry, from a place of fear, from a place of anxiety, of depression, of loneliness, of anger, of bitterness. Transform the way that they think about themselves, about others. Lord God, enlighten them today. Father, we pray that their eyes would be made to see, to see the word of the of the Lord, to see your goodness, to see that Jesus Christ died on the cross for their sins, to see the love of God for their lives, the unconditional love of God, that no matter what it is that we do, God, that you forgive us. Lord God, that your son took on all of our burdens, that he took on all of our weight, that he took on all of our sins. Father, we pray for your son and your daughter that don't know how to come to you. We pray for those, Lord God, that are lost. Those that are lost. Those that are lost. Those that are living in darkness. Those that don't know how to surrender all. And this morning if they would pray this prayer with me, you would enter into their hearts and you would receive them. So if you repeat after me and you say, Dear God, I know that I may not have always been the easiest person I know that I am a sinner and that my ways and my thoughts, my words and my actions are not of you. Father, I now commit my sins to you. I give them to you and I repent of all of my ways. I repent of all of my actions. I repent wanting a better life, wanting to know you and to serve you with all that I am. So I receive your forgiveness today and I thank you for it. And I now ask that you would I ask that the Holy Spirit would be invited into me. I believe in Jesus Christ, your son, that he died on the cross and rose for me. I believe his blood was shed for my iniquities and for my sins. And that he carries all of my weight and all of my burdens. So I release everything over to you. And I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I invite the Holy Spirit in. To show me your way. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. I want you to be encouraged. That the Lord is surely real. He will surely grant you peace. He will surely wrap his arms around you and show you the love of Christ. Show you what it means to be in his presence. Show you where you are to be and what and what this walk of salvation should look like. He will show it to you. 
but it's no longer the time for you to run, no longer the time for you to walk away and think that God would never receive you again. Just like the prodigal son, he's waiting with open arms, waiting to love you, waiting to receive you, waiting to shower you in his blessings, shower you in his favor, just shower you in his peace. He's waiting. But would you come to him today? Hallelujah. God, we thank you for those that have decided to give their life back to you. We thank you for those that have chosen to come back and to be in your presence. We pray now that the enemy would not have an inch of space to disrupt the plan of God. We thank you today that they are covered in your blood, that they are watched over, that they are kept, they are protected and guarded. Father, we thank you that you guard them under the wings of the shadow of the Almighty. We thank you that you have angels that encamp round about them, that you love your sheep, that you leave the 99 to go and get the one. So we thank you for the covering. We thank you for pushing back the darkness, O oh God. And that light would rule and reign and have its way in their lives. That transformation would begin to take place. That every good and perfect gift that you've placed down on the inside of them would be stirred up. And that they would be on fire for you. We thank you for all of these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Be blessed. Be encouraged this morning. God is still faithful. God is still in the business of forgiveness. He's still in the business of love. He's still in the business of peace. And he's gentle and he's kind. And we just thank him today for coming on in. Join me next week, Saturday, same time, same place at 6 a.m. for the Lord's Prayer. Tell somebody.